Hey, everybody, it says we're live, and I'm just going to trust it. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another Self Publishing Insiders with Draft to Digital. Uh, I'm coming at you from the beautiful Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And uh, to my right and below, we got our usual uh, motley crew. Go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Uh, this is uh, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. I'm coming to you from the Waterloo, Ontario office of Draft to Digital with my good friend, Barnaby Bones. Uh, he's just uh, pho photobombing me here. Yes. I'm coming from the ice wonderland of Oklahoma City right now. Uh, so if I disappear, it's because my power has suddenly gone out. It's been crazy the last few days, but uh, so far, so good this morning. Yeah. Uh, you guys, uh, so there's been like this cold snap in a couple of places. That's that's not really why we're in the uh, hotel instead of the van, but I wish we had been in the hotel because it was like two degrees. I saw Mark earlier, and uh, that led to some some things we won't discuss, uh, some problems we won't discuss. But uh, that that being that cold in the van was was not fun. <laughs> and I, I know you guys are having a, the same sort of issues with power lines snapping tree limbs falling that sort of thing it's just bizarre yeah, I, I think most people get an rv to go to the places where the weather is nice and you chose to go where the weather is even worse there is a little bit of method to our our madness in that but i i do i do admit that i wish we had rethought that <laughs> so, uh so okay well one of the things we were going to talk about today uh among other things is we actually have a brand new feature we're going to be rolling out and uh uh, so I want to discuss that a little bit uh, before I jump into it. Before we start talking about that stuff, is there anything else we want to cover? Any announcements or anything that we want to get to? Well, I'm sure have? people are going to be asking about Barnes and Noble, and they are still having technical problems. Yeah, uh, they were hacked, um, and they have been trying to recover from that for about two weeks, maybe a little bit longer than that now. Um, yeah. So we are talking to them nearly daily. <laughs> I'm trying to get everything expedited as soon as possible, but um, they are just so backed up. Yeah, that and this is not just affecting draft to digital authors. I mean, this is even the uh, folks who are going direct to Barnes and Noble. Are experiencing yeah, traditional publishers, direct authors. It's um, it's just a huge mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that's been interesting. And it, what I've been noticing is that there are, seems to be a lot of these little attacks like this uh, going around. Um, so hopefully this yeah. is, doesn't become a trend in the publishing industry. So, uh, or it's elsewhere. definitely something like uh, affecting like hospitals, uh, small townships are being hacked. Yeah. Um, it, it just goes to show the importance of um, computer security and you know making sure you're not reusing the same passwords, yep. uh, using things like two-factor yeah. authentication if it's uh, available. Is that never, not something never that clicking we can links talk about that you don't know? The yeah. two-factor authentication that's there for our authors. You, we do actually we do offer, have two factor. Yeah. What we call two FA, because everything we do has to be uh, three <laughs> letters with a two in it. <laughs> Draft to digital two FA. Yes, you can actually uh, uh, turn that on on your author account. So if you are a Draft to digital author, uh, you would go to your account page, uh, and I forget the. I can look up the uh, the actual where or where you're going, unless one of you guys remembers off the top of your head. I always have to double check things like that. I, know, yeah, I, I don't do, remember it, off the top of my head. It's in the My Account uh, settings. Uh, yes. I wonder if uh, Alyssa could kindly um, throw it's a under, screenshot or something in the comments. It'll be, and I'll put this, I'll drop this URL into it. But if you go to drafttodigital.com, log in, and you click on account, you'll go to account settings. And there is, um, like, the third thing down there is to enable 2FA. So, That'll allow you to, uh, it requires you to authenticate. So they'll, they can either send you a text message or an email and uh, you would give, you would use the code. You're probably familiar with this kind of thing because a lot of services are doing this now. I'm going to drop this in the comments, uh, that URL. So if you are logged into your draft to digital account, uh, you can click on that URL and it goes straight to that page. So uh, and one, one thing to keep in mind is it right now it does not work with, um, reporting softwares like book tracker or uh, right. like book report, I believe is one of them. Yeah. Um, so we, we are working with them to make it where you can still have two factor authentication and still work with those services, but it, it's a work in progress. So yeah. for right now, it, like don't use two factor if you're using one of those services, but don't tell anybody you're not using it. That's true. Never <laughs> tell people you're not using it. 
Uh, why don't we pop? I know we want, there's definitely a topic coming up we want to talk about, but uh, we got some questions popping into the comments. So why don't we pop some of those up and sure. address them? And the first is from No GMOs. Uh, I support this. Uh, since Spanish is the second most popular language spoken, how come you don't distribute Spanish books to Spanish booksellers? You seem to have German, French, and Italian covered, but not Spanish. Aye, aye, aye. Wait, we we are um, always looking to expand into uh, like other languages and other bookstores. Uh, frequently, um, we found with some of the international booksellers that they um, their systems aren't set up to work as quickly as we need uh, yeah. because Amazon kind of sets a very fast pace. Um, <clears throat> we do work with Twenty Four Symbols, which is uh, really focused on the Spanish market. It's a uh, subscription service. Um, but we are always interested. And if you let us know of any bookstores you want us to look into, um, there's always ones we haven't heard of. There's some that we've heard of and talked to, but just some, like sometimes they're just stuck in negotiations. Um, yeah. and so, uh, we love getting it everywhere. We know places like Kobo have some partnerships that get you into some of the, uh, Mexican bookstores and Spanish bookstores. Um, but it's definitely something we're interested in doing more with. By the way, Mark, everyone is enjoying your choice of attire. So uh, yeah, Sky said I had to show up in costume, so uh, I just wanted to uh, play with her uh, initially by uh, <laughs> by being in my civvies. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, by the way, earlier I shared this in the the comments, uh, but in case I don't know why it popped up in your author email. That's interesting. Uh, so draftdigital.com slash account slash settings. So if you need to. Uh, if you need to get to that, uh, you can. Okay, so here's a question. It just says promotions tab. So I'm guessing they want us to describe what that is and how it works. This is a nifty tool, by the way. Anybody want to field it? or you... Can I go? Can I go? Yeah, yeah, you go. I mean, we just saw Alyssa just created that amazing graphic uh, in, in conjunction with Kara and to help authors understand the promotions tool. And I think, Kevin, you've got a forthcoming blog post that's going yes. to include that. But <clears throat> this is an amazing tool because when you schedule a, a, a promotion with BookBub or a written word media or any of those other uh, places where you want to have your book change at midnight, you can go ahead and set it ahead of time. Uh, it, in the promotion tab, you can go, you can actually do multiple different promos at the same time. You can name them so you under you see so you know what it is, like you know, Craig's October Deadpool promo or whatever he's doing uh, there. And to have it flip to 99 cents and then flip back to whatever your price is or however you plan on doing the promo. And we send the files to the retailers the same way that the big publishers send files to the retailers. So they'll get an Onyx file with that data ahead of time, meaning they have the price change in their system ahead of time. And at midnight local time, it'll flip. Unlike on Amazon where you're forced to have to go in and, and, and do it just an hour or two before you want it to change. And the timing's never accurate. So that's one of the huge benefits of the tool. I, I call it the <coughs> set it and forget it. Well, not forget it, but set it and you don't have to worry about it. So if you're yeah. doing like a promo on Thanksgiving weekend and you're busy with the turkey and all the fun stuff or the Black Friday shopping, you know your book's going to drop to 99 cents when you planned on doing it. The other yeah, thing I that I'm excited about is some plans we have for the promotions tab. Uh, which may be related to some of the work that Kara has been doing, working with our retail partners and library partners, uh, eventually uh, in incorporating some of that there. So it's easy for you guys to find those, those other promos that we're doing in conjunction with, uh, with Kobo, with Apple, with Overdrive, et cetera. What One of the things that I really uh, like about the promotions tab, when you set up a promotion, you can name the promotions. So if you have multiple promotions going on, like I, at one point, I had uh, a book bub. I had a promotion through a uh, newsletter swap. I, I feel like I have to duck under the, uh, the little draft <laughs> digital banner. Uh, but I had multiple promotions going on. They were kind of stacked. And I was able to see which one was which, who this was for. Uh, one, one of them actually got canceled. So I was able to go find that and turn, turn the price change off. So uh, very handy tool. I use it a lot, actually, uh, more than I anticipated. Uh, Speaking of Sky, Sky has a question. When's the co-author payment feature coming? It is in beta right now. And so uh, I think we went ahead and got that link uh, yeah, available. Let me pop that uh, up. 
So uh, at Nink this year, we announced that they were kind of a smaller audience uh, due to COVID, but um, got some of the first people in the beta. Uh, Mark has been an active participant in the alpha slash beta phases That's of this. That's the wrong one, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we're just uh, testing it now. Uh, you can sign up uh, at the link that uh, Kevin just uh, shared uh, for the beta, and we are pulling in a couple of people a week and uh, setting up their accounts to do this. Um, it's going great. We've already been doing some payment splitting uh, features for some of the authors that had uh, Kindle Worlds back in the day. And so we have experience with it and the taxes. Uh, now we're just uh, figuring out how to make it all scale and let everyone take advantage of that. Uh, and it's really cool. Like you can use it to work with other authors. Um, you could use it like if you wanted to, like if you found like a graphic designer, um, or cover designer that would work with you on it. You could split uh, royalties with them for a while if you can't afford to pay upfront. Um, just the opportunities of what you can use this uh, feature for are just really cool. Yeah, just uh, Mark and I actually have a little uh, a box set of a couple of our books out there. So we're kind of playing around with it. I, I think it's even sold some copies. <laughs> We've actually, yeah, it was just it was just to test the system. <laughs> it was kind of like, and people started buying it. Oh well, they're enjoying our fiction. Um, I actually right. have an anthology coming out at the end of November that uh, I have uh, sixteen contributors, and everyone's getting a cut of the pie uh, when that when that releases. And so I have it up for pre order, assetless pre order, which you can do uh, for for many of our uh, downstream uh, vendors and. Um, uh, and, and it's been really, really cool uh, to, to, to set that up and, and to go in. And, and, and what I like about it uh, from the publisher or editor standpoint is I can see who has agreed to the terms, who has accepted the terms. I can, there's a, it's really handy in the dashboard. And I really think for me in particular, one of the things I love about this feature is I'm Canadian. So I have the, uh, I just finished a WADN uh, form for uh, Find Away Voices. I know on Draft to Digital and Amazon, you ever you have to fill those out every once in a while so you don't get the 30% withholding rate if you're not American. Right. If you're in a country like Canada, that's part of the treaty. And uh, when I get the money in US dollars, I have to exchange it to Canadian and you always lose a little bit of money because the banks get some. Uh, and then if I were to pay the American contributors or partners that I'm working with, then I have to translate it again where I lose a little bit more money and paying them back. But what I love yeah. about this is Drafted Digital takes care of paying them. All they have to have is a Drafted Digital account and the ability to get paid. Uh, I get paid, they all get paid. None of this back and forth. I don't have that has hassle and headache. Uh, I think it's a really, really great collaborative uh, thing. And and I'm just so so proud of the people at Drafted Digital, the, the people way, way smarter than me who, who, who make this happen, who built the tools. And uh, I'm just yeah. so excited for this release. Just, yeah. they, they made it super easy, like all of our other tools. So it's really, really, uh, it's, this is something that me and Mark and Kevin, like everyone's wanted for a long time. Right. Uh, it was kind of technically challenging and just like the tax stuff is always uh, crazy. But um, you know, we, we've been doing this for about eight years now of uh, handling taxes like worldwide and we've gotten really good at it. Uh, yeah, and I was going to mention that everyone uh, who participates, you, you go through the same process as you would to set up a, a standard D2D account. You uh, fill out a tax interview. So everything is very streamlined, very automated. Uh, yeah, it's really been a it's really been interesting to see it unfold because this was something that was probably one of our most requested features. Uh, people have been very excited about it. Uh, let's see. Let's roll on down. And that URL, by the way, that's on screen, I did share that in the comments. So you should be able to just click on through. Um, let's see. We got people saying hello. We got uh, Trollbuster says part one. So let's look for part two after this. Uh, hi, I'm absolutely new to this kind of thing. I recently signed up for a new DD account and uploaded my first book in Word file. It's a book in an in Indic language with lots of pictures, etc. Uh, so not a question there, but I mean, do we foresee any challenges or difficulties for this author with the, uh, is part two the question I I'm, I'm going to look for it and, uh, we'll post, there it is part two. Unfortunately, the layout formatting pictures, everything got messed up. I tried this with PDF two, same thing happened. What can I do? Yeah. Sounds like uh, it's a picture book, right? Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> like anything with pictures is a little bit harder. Um, there are different formats that are meant to account for uh, pictures because you got to remember with ebooks, 
uh, they are made to be reflowable. And so in general, like right. with fiction, um, the words can be wherever. And that's because people might be reading on their phone or they might be reading on their iPad or their computer. Um, and so the, the words are going to kind of move around depending on the, what screen they're looking at it on. Um, with pictures, like you want them to have certain aspect ratios and things like that. Uh, so it is much more difficult. And that's really the only case where we uh, recommend people look into an actual uh, person that uh, does uh, book layouts. Um, so it, you can use some other tools to make um, picture books. Unfortunately, they're kind of, they're generally specific to a certain retailer. Like Amazon has some tools to make a picture book but it only works on Amazon. Apple's got a, a tool, but it only works on Apple. And so um, you, what you want is a fixed layout book and people have to do that in some of the more expensive tools like uh, InDesign. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's worthwhile to go find. You can find someone who would handle the layout part of that for rel relatively inexpensive on sites like Fiverr.com, which we don't typically recommend, uh, but wouldn't recommend them for things like a book cover or something along those lines. But for getting your book into the layout, uh, you know, there's plenty of people on that site who would be willing to do it for fairly cheap. So that's a good source. Yeah. And one thing to mention, because we do have, uh, there's a lot of confusion over the PDF format. People frequently will bring us a PDF. Um, I don't think any of the major retailers uh uh, will use PDF like they, they don't accept it. PDF is only meant for print format. Um, right. a, a lot of people still do read PDFs on their devices as like digital files, but it, it's a format that is, doesn't work on any e-readers. Um, it's just meant to, I guess some of them will open PDF, but, um, none of the bookstores sell the PDF format. What you need is a movie file for Amazon. Um, although they're kind of moving over to EPUB and EPUB has become the industry standard. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is, we might have to parse this one a little. And John, you may have to add some detail in the comments. But uh, for book metadata, how do you get the search terms to record and get prioritized? Right now, I type in keywords and nothing sticks. This may be a, a technical issue that I need to uh, yeah. reach out to the customer support over. Um, yeah, that sounds like an, a, a browser issue more than um, because they, they should just stick. Um, it could be a JavaScript thing enabler. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, that's kind of how I'm interpreting the question. I mean, yeah. it could also be um, like if you're talking about like the retailers, not like the book not coming up, not all the retailers use the keywords. We yeah. send the keywords everywhere, but not all of them uh, make use of them. Or yeah. they might make use of them for like Amazon uses them to figure out like certain categories, uh, but then the keywords don't really do anything in, in their search engine outside of uh, getting it into the right category. Yeah, I know you can so, prioritize by dragging. There's the little boxes over on the left. So when you put in all your keywords and you see the list, if you have a really long list, do prioritize, drag the ones that are the most important to the top because some retailers kind of stop after a yeah. certain number, right? So you want like the first three or four or five or six or seven to be the most prominent. Yeah, just for a good rule of thumb is to treat it as the, the first, the first one on the list is the most important and the second is the second most, et cetera. Uh, Cause there are actually retailers that do, they do prioritize that way. Uh, I went ahead and put this in the comments as well, but on screen you'll see if you do have a technical support question like that, reach out to us at support at drafteddigital.com where real live humans in Oklahoma city, Oklahoma will answer your question in perfect English. We're totally so, not robots. <laughs> we're totally not yet. We're working on it. Uh, okay. So, Let's see. Uh, this is just more of a general comment, and I like the name, Fat Author. Uh, I'm interested in Draft Digital. I've only ever been exclusive to Amazon, but Amazon has been getting on my nerves lately. We can relate, Fat Author. <laughs> we, we hear that a lot. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Lori via Facebook. I have a question. How does a self-published author advertise for free due to no money? Um, there's actually a lot of ways you can get some free exposure. Uh, one of them is uh, doing like newsletter swaps and exchanges uh, are, have been a great way for people to to uh, get their book out there. I actually always recommend that you do that to grow your mailing list. Um, but even if you're just trying to sell a few copies of your book, they can be very handy and they don't necessarily cost anything. Uh, if you can find a group of authors willing to do that, you can certainly uh, join in. Uh, one resource for that does cost something per month. Uh, but book funnel 
uh, at bookfunnel.com actually does have uh, this little promotions thing where you can sign up, say my book fits these categories and they'll email you. And I get probably, you know, three or four emails a day about, our, uh, you know, upcoming promotions um, with newsletter swaps. So uh, there's also a tool. Well, uh, if you're, if money is a concern, um, if you can come up with some kind of budget, there are some resources out there like uh, Bargain Booksy and Free Booksy. Uh, they do have a fee, uh, but it's usually fairly reasonable. So, um, and it can usually lead to, you know, maybe a, a few, you know, 50 clicks or so. If people may buy your book, it's not usually a ton of traffic, but it's a good way to kind of get the ball rolling. So, you guys have any other free ideas? Don't, don't, don't you have a, like a blog post uh, that kind of, Oh, yeah, the, the stuff. Yeah. You're gonna make me go find a blog post. Well, right. if, if, if not, that would make a great blog post. But I, I, I feel like you've yeah, done there is a blog post on, I, on I, I do have page, yeah. author marketing 101. I think was, uh, and I'll, yeah. I'll try to find that. Um, it's like a three part blog post that gives you. So, while he's looking for the blog post to, to 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 share, Lori, one of the things that works really really well. Uh, I come from a small town initially. Now I'm not in a small town, but the small town is really really supportive. And what I found as an author is. Leverage uh, the smaller the community, the better. Define yourself as a big fish in a small pool. Most people will want to have written a book. Most people will not have written a book. Uh, I've sent press releases out to local uh, media, local radio, local television stations, local newspapers. And, uh, and I've been really, really lucky because if the angle is right, local author during COVID releases ebook to 190 countries using a service in Oklahoma, you're suddenly an international author. Even if you've only sold a few copies, you can say, you know, this author is sold in six different countries or had downloads in six countries. That's one of the things that can work really, really well because I've found the smaller the community, the more they get behind you. And that sometimes that little extra exposure doesn't cost you anything other than time. Uh, but what I always do is I always look for a local hook, um, you know, uh, one of the last ones that got me some good exposure was I talked about how the place where I grew up inspired uh, elements of my latest novel. And uh, and that was an amazing experience where where I got television, radio and newspaper. Uh, you don't I don't always get uh, all of those things, but I find I have way more luck in a smaller town than I do in the big city. So yeah. it's free. Right. And all it is is reaching out to the local free a uh, weekly newspaper that gets dropped off that you probably throw in your recycle bin. It's reaching yeah. out to your local church group if they have a newsletter. If, maybe it's a high school alumni group. Uh, you know, any of those little things, because there may be someone who who goes, "Wow, I'm I this this has uh, this has relevance to me," uh, and it can be by the topic or the fact that you're local. Yeah, uh, I, I would say uh, like participate in communities where you think your readers uh, will be. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of both traditional and uh, self-published authors uh, participate uh, like in uh, Reddit, this is like subreddits for uh, sci-fi and fantasy. And, you know, I, I don't mean go there and try to sell your book, but like actually just be a part of the community. And then every once in a while, if you run a sale and you let them know, people are going to you know accept you as part of the group. Uh, they're going to know that you like the same things they like and that your books probably are going to be about the things they like. And yeah. uh, I, I've seen people get sales through that. One, one more thing you can try, by the way, is um, uh, make sure you are asking people you're already connected to to share that you have a book. Uh, I, you know, especially and you should have a mailing list. I, you know, that's our number one recommended marketing tool. Uh, and you can get a free mailing list. You can set it up and start inviting people onto it. But, you know, start with friends and family and just say, hey, look, help me out. You're you're my family. You're my friends. Could you please share this with, you know, everyone you know uh, and let them know that I have a book available. And uh, you, you will start seeing some traction there. So people forget to ask. So, uh, so uh, data, I'm going to leave it at that. It says, hello, everyone. I'm Joanna. Uh, we will we be able to advertise paid advertising as an option. So draft to digital doesn't have any paid advertising and the merchandising, like the work we do with retailers on promotions are all free. Um, so through us, like you, you, the, you know, the only money we make is when we help you sell a book. Uh, so being a part of that and, and you know, we kind of did that on purpose. Um, as far as there are a lot of other services out there, um, you know, I, I think probably the best bang for your buck generally ends up being uh, BookBub, like which you apply for the, like their daily feature deals. Um, 
generally they're going to do the most good and that's where I would spend money if you have that amount, but they're kind of pricey because everyone wants them and yeah. you have to apply, you know, I, I know people that applied like 50 times to get their first one. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is competitive. Um, after that, uh, like Amazon ads and Facebook ads uh, seem to be the most effective things for indie authors. Um, I, I would, if you only have one book, I wouldn't spend a lot of money trying to advertise one book through those means. Uh, but the return on investment, uh, if you've got like a book in a series and so you're advertising one book, but they're probably going to buy three or four books, uh, it can really make sense. Can I also put in a good word for our friend, David Gogren? His book on BookBub ads is phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we've interviewed him on uh, previous uh, episodes of this podcast slash, uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook uh, channel, but you can find free interviews with him where he shared uh, tips on how to do BookBub ads. This is not a feature deal, but an ad where, you know, you can just maybe test it out for $5 and, and, um, and actually show that ad um, beyond just Amazon to all other platforms. Uh, and, he, and he also has a, um, a new YouTube channel where he's doing a lot of great content oh, and you cool. can see it's crazy beard, yes. <laughs> which gets, it just gets longer and longer. <laughs> Eventually it's just going to take over his entire body. Uh, okay. I was going to pop up his, uh, you can find, I, I didn't find it immediately. I think I'm searching wrong. Uh, but we do have, if you go to, uh, youtube.com slash draft to digital, uh, you'll be able to, to search for our interview with David Gogger. He does talk about BookBub ads, which by the way are different from the BookBub feature deals. Uh, they're far mm -hmm. less, there's no competition to get them. First of all, it's a pay to play service. Uh, they've been very effective. Uh, he's, he's got a whole book on the subject. Um, and I do recommend it. Uh, our, our, one of our fellows, Nick Thacker also has a book on the subject. So you might want to check that out as well. Um, Okay, so Craig Price asks, uh, with Google Books' recent policy changes, are you considering bringing ba them back to DDD? We would love to. Like the the problem yeah. isn't us. This problem is not us. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, if yeah, they change no, the way uh, they do it, yeah, sure, that yeah. would be a, a feasible option. But the way it works now, <laughs> it is not a feasible system. It's not scalable, and it's not yeah. something we can properly support you guys the way we need to support you guys. One of, the, one of the things that we, we try to make clear to folks, like we we actually vet the whole the retailers as much as we vet the authors in the books. Just like our retailers have certain guidelines and rules uh, that, that we can't allow the authors to violate. You know, it's just their policy and we can't allow them to violate. You know, so we check your books. We check to make sure everything's in compliance. Uh, we do the same thing on your behalf with the retailers. So if a retailer has a bad history, well, I'm not saying Google does, uh, but if there's you know quirky things that they do that just don't uh, gel well with how we like to treat our authors, we won't uh, use them. We had um, Google Play for quite some time, and not I don't know about a year actually, not 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 a great deal of time, but uh, in that time it was just always ups and downs about how we uh, how we interacted with them, and it just got to a point where we thought it wasn't a good fit for our authors. So as soon as we can figure out a way to make it a good fit, yeah, we'll definitely bring them back. They are um, definitely listening to the community. They're making really good, positive changes that puts them in line with every other digital book retailer. After you know seven or eight years of them trying to do their own thing without yeah. success, um, you let Google know you would like to work with us because we would love to work with them. Yeah, uh, we do talk to them from time to time, but um, there were just some things they wanted that were weird and made the whole process really difficult. And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't. <laughs> um, let's see. Lori has another question. I have a question. Uh, has anyone ever taken a book you did you did and you were not happy with killing your character off? What would you all do? So this this I think is for me and you, Mark. Let's dance <laughs> secretly writing some books now. I, I, I would do I would do the whole Dallas thing and just like yeah. oh, that last book was dream. a dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I imagine there's a, there's some young people out there that have no clue what I'm talking about, so like, yeah. that makes me happy. But if you've watched any soap opera, all you have to do is come up with a twin, missing twin, or or is the twin that died not the not the person? All kinds of so stuff. So I had a character. I killed off a character in my last uh, Dan Cotler book, and I got. Uh, so many angry emails about it. Uh, and, but what I did was I made a, I gave them a new headquarters and I named it for her. So she is the memorial 
uh, headquarters. And uh, that seemed to satisfy everybody. Everybody was kind of happy with that. So maybe, maybe, you know, just remember, the, you know, the reader has an investment in these characters, just like you do. Uh, yeah. And when this character does die, there's a grieving process, just like losing somebody in real life. Uh, so treat it with some respect and, you know, throw, throw them a little something. Uh, putting that per- character's name on a building that these, that everyone else uses all the time. So, yeah. you know, I, I will open a chapter saying, you know, the, the Danielle Brown Memorial, I forget the name I use. I've got a little list, but uh, that's a good way to handle stuff like that. Just, yeah. I mean, celebrate the fact that, that a reader was so cared so much about a character that they were upset. Like that's, that's a sign of a brilliant writer and, and a connection you yeah. made with the reader, but you give them a, give them a prequel story, right? Like look at the black right. widow movie that still hasn't come out, but you know, no, spoiler alert, but she dies in the last Avengers movie. Hey, Hey, so Hey, a prequel. It's come on. It's been out for long enough, but it's a prequel. <laughs> and so people who love the character get to enjoy the character. So Give them, you know, for those, maybe it's a short story. Maybe it's something you only give to people who sign up for your newsletter, Lori. Um, and that's something that can appease those dedicated diehard fans and get more of that character they love. Yeah, if they love a character, you should definitely build some material around that character. Um, Trollbuster had a part three uh, to his question or her question. I'm not, I'm not here to make any decisions Their question. for you. Their question. Uh, I am trying to convert my book in Word file into HTML5 using Dreamweaver so that it is easier to convert into EPUB. Do you think that's going to work? Why wouldn't you just use I, our free conversion? Use or our free conversion. I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> I think this um, was the, the author that had the picture book, though. Oh, the picture book, yeah. yeah. It's um, you know, an EPUB essentially is um, an a lot like HTML code, yeah. like it, when you get down to it. Um, each like service you use like that or each thing that you're doing adds in a little bit of code behind the scenes. Uh, and the more code there is behind the scenes, the more likely something will break. Um, really, you, you want to design the book from the ground up as an EPUB and use like tools that are meant to be uh, EPUB tools rather than uh, like Dreamweaver is for making websites. So, uh, Lexi Green posted a comment, a useful comment uh, in regards to our conversation earlier about the search, the, the um, putting the terms, uh, making the terms record. Why am I, is my brain no work now? Um, you do have to hit enter after each search term. So it goes from the search term field into the box underneath. So uh, if you're not, if you're just typing in those, those terms and not doing that, um, actually, I think you can also hit the comma and it adds that keyword. I believe that's our functionality or maybe I'm yeah. just, that's how that WordPress that's works. That's <laughs> exactly right. Uh, let's see. Kathy from YouTube uh, asks, you've spoken before about expanding the reader-facing side of D2D. Any d- updates on this or new features in the works? Now, we did mention new features in terms of the um, payment splitting. We also have a very beautiful uh, merchandising person uh, who's, who's helping to pull together promotions. She happens to be my wife, Kara. Uh, so those are kind of new and there's a lot of traction happening there. Um, and that we are that's still the author facing side of things. Though. I think the, the reader side is books to read, which I know Mark has spent a lot of time, um, this last few months coming up with some plans for, uh, that, that are really reader focused. Um, we are working on supporting audiobooks better in the near future. Um, I don't know if we have anything coming out this year, but like next year, there's going to be a lot of focus on that. Yeah, there's a lot of work involved in doing this properly because what you guys want and need is you need another way for people to discover your amazing books that you're producing. And that's kind of what we're driving at is focusing on how do we solve that problem to to help the right reader find the right book to read using books to read. Uh, we do have things in the works in the background that are meant to build that reader facing side. So it's not something that's just sitting there, uh, lying fallow. We actually do have things in progress. So nothing we can reveal. That's my teaser. Uh, you just have to keep coming back to these every week to find out more. Um, so, uh, Charlie Marsh asks, uh, I've been hearing that free first in series is no longer working and I'm, and I'm hearing that. And I'm hearing that it is, since you folks get to see a lot of authors, what are you seeing from this marketing technique? I have some opinions on this. <laughs> uh, it's been as strong uh, I, as ever from my yeah. perspective. Yeah. 
So, uh, I, I, I think really it doesn't depends. work well on Amazon anymore, and people frequently talk about Amazon as the only game in town, and That's it's what fine. I was it, say. Yeah, free first of series works great at all the other retailers. It's just there are so many books on Amazon, and when you've got a lot of readers subscribe to something like KU, where in effect a book looks free to them, that takes the the power of magic out of free first and series. Yeah. Um, and so, and uh, Apple is actually try it, just- try it wide, yeah. Yeah, Apple's been telling us that they are seeing a lot of traction on uh, yeah. uh, first and series free. So uh, that that's a good market. I mean, there's a, I think there's a second biggest U.S. market at least. Uh, and a second biggest digital retailer of books, retailer. Uh, like selling digital books. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, it does work. Uh, so the only caveat is that the big giant everyone always falls back on uh, is starting to see some slippage. So. Uh, David asks, uh, what's the typical wait time once I publish the DDD for retailers to make it available? It, it varies a little bit um, with the, the big guys like Apple and Kobo and Barnes and Noble. It's typically like within a few hours, it, go, it goes up depending on what time it's submitted. Like uh, overnight, sometimes it might wait for someone to be able to review it, uh, but it's pretty quick. Uh, library systems weren't designed for like the speed of retailers. And so the library systems take a little bit longer. Um, right. Some of them can take up to a week. Uh, some of the international retailers um, are smaller. And so some of them take uh, like a week or two, um, but uh, that's to get a book up, getting books down. We generally make uh, in our agreements, we make people get books down within a few days. And so right. um, that part goes quick. Price changes go quick but getting a book up initially um, is going to vary from a few hours to uh, I would say two weeks would be the longest. Um, that being said, the Barnes and Noble problem right now, it's been about two weeks since we've been able to publish a new book to Barnes and Noble. Right. They've got people working around the clock on it, but they've had, they had to work on getting their website back up so they could sell books. They had to work on making sure people get access to the library of books they've already bought. Uh, so they're working through a lot of issues due to the, um, the <laughs> issues they had. Yeah. And I hope they're um, still working through a bit of a backlog too, right? Um, so that's not as quick. Yeah, as I mean, I think we're going to see. It will be eventually. Yeah, we're going to see kind of a delay with Barnes & Noble uh, for probably a couple of months to come. Uh, just because there is such, there's, you know, they're a popular retailer to distribute to anyway. So um, that, that back catalog has got to be backing up. Yeah. Um, so Diana asks, uh, is there a way to have the book open to a page before chapter one? I use DVD to format my books, but if I put sign up links for newsletters in the front and my dedication, et cetera, the books don't open on those pages. I think the retailers control that. And so like yeah. each uh, different retailer has different options and generally their app or their the settings on the e-reader will let, uh, or let readers choose like where they want it to open. Yeah. Um, I believe there's a trick with Amazon to like tell them like open on this page unless the reader told you otherwise. Um, but I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Most of them default to chapter one though. And it's, it's not really under our control. And it's, I've never, never, I read on Kobo. I've never had that happen. It just opens on the very first page of the book and you're well, good to go. Aren't you special? Yeah, I know. We have a really a good, <laughs> awesome reader here. Uh, let's see. Um, can you discuss pricing ebooks and audiobooks to libraries? Yes, we can. We can. Uh, Moving on. So, libraries, and, and I think <laughs> Kathleen also asked if Overdrive is the only way. No, it's not. We have five different library uh, distributor platforms that we work with Baker and Taylor, Overdrive, uh, Hoopla, uh, uh, Adillo, Biblioteca, Biblioteca, Biblioteca. Uh, and more to come. Um, the reason why you want to price your ebook, uh, your library price a little bit higher for ebooks and audiobooks is usually with the the licensing a lot of libraries use is the um, they they buy a copy of the book and then they can loan it forever to one patron at a time. So because they're loaning it over and over again, instead of charging, let's say you're charging four ninety nine retail US for your ebook, maybe you want to price the library version of that book nine ninety nine or fourteen ninety nine uh, could be somewhere in that range. It depends on the the content, the genre, uh, and then that way they buy it and they're they're getting more for their value because they get to use it again. Or in the cost per checkout model, which many of our uh, well, many of our library platforms use as well, is uh, that's like one tenth of the price. So if, if you set it at ten dollars, 
uh, you'd make a dollar rather than yeah. just under uh, five dollars on that ten dollar book. So that's why pricing your ebooks um, to the library channel uh, is a little bit higher because libraries for traditionally published books are used to spending anywhere from thirty to fifty to eighty to one hundred and fifty dollars when they buy their ebooks from a uh, a major Random House or Simon & Schuster or one of those major publishers, and they also expire. So let's say after 30 people have checked it out, they have to buy another copy. So you're not ripping off the library if you do charge $10 for an ebook when your your normal ebook prices are a half of that. You're actually still giving them a really good value for your great book. Yeah. Uh, we've got about five minutes left. I'm going to start kind of bouncing around in questions here. I don't want to, I don't want to leave anyone out if we can avoid it. But, uh, so Kathleen says pretty stupid question. Uh, if someone orders a book through one of your affiliates, who delivers the book? Dan, it gets on a scooter and drives it. <laughs> uh, it, it, it would be whatever retailer that they bought it off of. Um, right. so if they bought it at Apple and it was a digital book, um, Apple would deliver them the digital file. Uh, if it's a print book, it would be wherever whoever they bought it from. So if they bought it from Amazon or they bought it from Barnes and Noble, uh, then that store would deliver, you know, have it delivered via whatever method they use. And Kathleen had a follow up question: uh, How do I know what sales have been made? So there's a reports page uh, that uh, you can go to every day. Um, the the big retailers all give us daily estimates the next day and so you can see if you sold stuff the day before um some of the retailers uh especially like smaller ones uh we might only get numbers monthly and so uh, keep yeah. that in mind but uh you know the ones where you really care like apple amazon Barnes and noble uh right. the next day you're going to find out um, what kind of sales you had uh, Glenn Daniels asks, uh, can you tell us about how offering a free book works? Is there a cost to the author? Where does it get listed? Is it a good, is it a good way to promote other books? So we discussed some of this, but we didn't talk about whether or not there was a cost to the author. Uh, there's absolutely no cost, but some retailers won't let you list for free. So Amazon is the prime example of that. Uh, you can uh, sometimes get Amazon to price match a book to free. Uh, and it takes contacting them via uh, back secret back channels that are very difficult to find. But uh, if you can get in and uh, if you actually have like a KDP account, you can sometimes sneak it in that way. They don't like to do that, um, but they will do it occasionally. So if you ask nicely, uh, but if you set your book to free through our service to all the other retailers, um, first of all, if you distribute to Amazon through us, it'll set it at 99 cents. I believe that's that was the minimum, right? Uh, but if you set it for free to all the other retailers, we take care of that and there's no charge to you. So unless you just want to pay me and then I will send you my uh, PayPal email address. Um, <laughs> so uh, Martinique, which I love this name, Martinique Mims. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that's how it's pronounced. Uh, how do you begin to advertise or get on podcasts? We don't have a physical book and you're a first time author. I don't know what to tell people in an email. Uh, what I can offer them if the book is not out yet. It, I'm in the illustration phase now. Um, you know, what's great about podcasts is you, you can, well, most of the time you can find an email address on the website for the podcast, you know, whoever it is that's hosting, and just reach out and say, hey, I've got a book coming out and I'd love to talk about it. Um, the things I would tell them are, you know, what makes your book unique? So I've interviewed hundreds of authors, so is Mark. Uh, and on this program, we've interviewed hundreds of, of authors. Um, the thing that we're looking for is that, that unique story, something special about the book. If we're going to be talking about, about your work, so something special about your backstory, maybe. Uh, maybe there's something in your history and your past that uh, informed the book and made, made you need to write the book. Uh, so give them a compelling story. I mean, you're an author, you know, uh, weave the story for them. Tell them what they're going to be sharing with their listeners. Um, that's my primary advice. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, just focus on those things that uh, you're the best person to have written this book than anyone else in the world. And and so you can own that. And and you can look for niche podcasts, for example, on almost any topic. So if, if your main character happens to be, um, you know, a world-renowned uh, knitter, 
uh, maybe maybe this is something that goes on a knitting podcast. It doesn't necessarily like you can go right down to whatever niche, whatever specialty, uh, the illustrator, whatever. Right, any of those focuses. The beautiful thing about podcasts is there's a podcast for almost any unique pastime, passion, hobby, and people from those podcasts would probably want to hear that story that you have to tell or that your character has to tell or whatever it is that makes you and your and your book unique. Yeah. Okay, last I, I question. Feel like, I feel like I might, just real quick on that, I feel like I might wait until you have something to sell because, uh, you know, at, at, beforehand, people might hear your story and really love it, but if they can't act immediately, like we're all so busy and we get distracted, yeah. um, maybe that is a pre-order, like putting it up for pre-order. Right. Um, but I, I would wait until you get to that point where you have something to sell before even trying to get That's a very uh, good interviewed. Point. Yeah, have have yeah. a call to action uh, that they can immediately act on because it otherwise there's Web no point with a newsletter. The newsletter is always <laughs> so. Last question, and then we got to wrap up. Uh, Raksha asks, should our book be priced the same as library auto price? Uh, I'm I'm interpreting that by the way as should the retail price match the library price, but I may be wrong about that. And uh, we kind of touched on that earlier, but it, it should be higher. Um, just Should because be the library is going to loan it out multiple times. Um, traditional publishers are charging uh, considerably more, like Mark mentioned, like 30 to $100. Uh, that's what traditional uh, author or traditional publishers are charging libraries. Um, and so you want to go up. Um, you know, we generally are recommending like two to three times the retail list price. Um, but I know people that are charging like $19.99, $29.99. Um, yeah. It's kind of up to you, but it's nice that you have that option. Like you, you don't have to worry about price matching or anything. It's just for the library systems that's being charged. Um, and that said, I think we're it's time we go ahead and wrap up. We didn't mention this earlier, so I want to pop this up now. Uh, we actually have a promo going on right now with Apple, Apple's winter's most anticipated. So uh, I believe this is for, Mark, you, you know the specific details. This is for like pre-orders? Yeah, this is for pre-orders. So if you are <laughs> ahead and you have a book coming out, I believe it's between the 1st of December and the end of February, uh, you can submit it to nominate so that we can present it to Apple and say, hey, it's in this genre, and there's a place where you can say, why is this most anticipated? It, maybe it's a new book in a series. Maybe it's a spin-off a book. Maybe it's something that's just hot and uh, everyone's looking for. Uh, and that's just one of the great promos that we're constantly trying to get for our authors. Yeah, and I just put the, that link itself in the comments, so you can just click through and uh, go and now the caveats here are the book has to be distributed through us and to Apple. Uh, so if you've just got a book on Amazon or something, sorry, you don't have to play. So uh, I think that's going to have to wrap us up, guys. This has been a really good one. We've had uh, quite a few people pop Lots in. Lots of questions. So. Yeah, Great we question. need to probably do these more often. So uh, thank you so much to everyone who did tune in. If you are not already, you should subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, uh, you can go in on Facebook. You can go to youtube.com slash draft to digital and facebook.com slash draft to digital. Imagine that. Um, you might also want to bookmark D to D live because that's where we actually have a little countdown meter for this live broadcast. So uh, we do... Typically, we do a couple of these a month, so you, if you go and bookmark that page and check back often, you'll be able to, uh, you know, drop in on us. And, uh, you know, make sure you start your self-publishing career at drafttodigital.com. That one's a streamer. That one didn't show up as easy. Uh, and finally, um, selfpublishinginsiders.com is where you're going to find all these uh, back interviews, episodes, AUAs, all that stuff. Uh, in a blog format so you can read transcripts, you can watch the video, you can listen in on the uh, podcast. And of course, uh, listen to the self publishing Insiders podcast wherever fine podcasts are sold. And we really appreciate you taking the time, spending this time with us. And take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>